All right, it's 6.30. I'll call the Tuesday, November 23rd, 2021, Board of Selectmen meeting to order. Uh, the meeting is being taped by Area 58 and also simulcast out through Zoom. Uh, we'll start off with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, any additions or subtractions to the agenda? All right, here. There was that, um, going to vote that that request from the last meeting. Are you going to wait on that? Um, you know, it's like yeah. I'm going to hold it. So I'm not going to talk to you before you vote. Oh, hold on. Oh, I'm out of order here. Um, you know, we, we have a meeting Tuesday, right? So I'll just move it to that because we have it earlier. Okay. Oh, well, we already posted for it. So we yeah, we can change up to tomorrow because some of this stuff might get moved anyways. Right? Okay. Okay. That's Perfect. Right, yeah, right down together. Yes. Yeah, I'll change that. that. Yeah. All right. Yes. Got it. Get something to I'll write something for you. Yeah, man. All set? Yep. All right, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, aye? Aye. aye. Okay, uh, first up we have regular session meeting minutes of June 25th, 2021. Is there a motion to approve? Move it. Second. All those in favor, aye. aye. Executive session from May 10th, 2021. Uh, myself and Troy. Troy, you want to move it? Move. I'll second. All those in favor, aye. Abstain. You abstain, Ashley? Yes, yeah, abstain. Okay, executive session, May 20th, 2021. Some of Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Executive session, June 8th, 2021, session one. Is there a motion to approve? Move it. Is there a second? second? All those in favor, aye. 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 All right. You're up, Ashley. Uh, I move to affirm no. I move to affirm approval of the following warrants and commitments. How do I want to do these without you? Uh, school warrant number 41 for $174,093.31. Are you not going to do the vendor warrant? Yeah, I'm not going to. Or you the withholding? Just go down to ambulance commitment. Okay. And I'll from ambulance commitment date 1025 to 1031 for thirty seven thousand four hundred twenty six dollars and sixty six cents, and an ambulance commitment from eleven eight to eleven fourteen for seventy three thousand two hundred sixty six dollars and ninety one cents. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. All right. Unanimous. I move to affirm approval of the following warrants and commitments: payroll warrant number forty two for three hundred ninety three thousand one hundred forty nine dollars and thirty cents. Vendor warrant number 43 for $115,618.53. Withholding warrant number 44 for $139,954. And vendor warrant number 45 for $47,721.58. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Troy? Yes. And I abstain. Uh, I move to affirm payment of the following selectman bill, South Coast County's legal services for fiscal year 2022 for $3,500. Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay, unanimous. And then I move to approve the following warrants. Payroll warrant number 46 for $413,454.34. Vendor warrant number 47 for $82,866.30 and withholding warrant number 48 for $148,027.31. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to approve payment on the following selectman bills. I was reading your little note there. Uh, National Grid for Town Hall Electricity for $1,017.57. You want to do them? 
haul or parcel? Do you want us to vote on each one individually? Or? I don't usually. I usually just read through them all, but if you all want right. me to. Which one? It's up to you. Yeah. Uh, data processing for $510.17. Um, insurance for Bill Russell, $124.54. Green Communities, Guardian Energy, $15,281. Law for Brooks and Dorensis, $28,824.39. Law for William August Esquire, there's no total on this page. $550. Law for Boston Appraisal and Consulting for $7,500. That is the end of those. Who oh, second those? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. I think they're all signed already. Just double check us, please. All right. Um, we've got three minutes before the chief. Um, Pam, you got in recycling bills. Uh, abatement requests. Yes, they're right there. The floor, right there yeah. All right. So, <coughs> bill number twenty-four fifty-three. We received the letter from the hall, but no abatement form. It was received on the twenty-fifth. It's the board's pleasure. If there's no form. What are we talking about? Bill number which well, one? The reasons he was delinquent. Did you skip 1953? No, it was. Oh, you're out of order. Okay. I I'm out of order. Okay. Is there a motion to approve or a motion to deny? I move to approve. I abstain from this one. I recuse. All right, well. I'll, I'll second. Um, all those in favor, aye? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, bill number 1953. This received November 5th. After the deadline. Is there a motion to approve or deny? Yes, again. Why? Did you do any follow-up? Oh, it just came in late, but we didn't follow up with them, right? You guys just did. Which one? 19, um, 1953 is the one. 1953. Okay, so join us. So if you read underneath there, you know, they did submit the abatement. Um, we see the letter from the hauler. No, the, uh, no 1953. I did them out of, okay. I had them out of order on my paper. So, yeah, so that was after the deadline. I mean, yeah, so is there a motion to approve or deny? What's the board's budget? <clears throat> Came in after the deadline. Well, we've normally done denied. Those. Okay, so I'll second the motion if that's a motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, next up, we have the Earth Removal Turkey Swamp, 145 Montponson Street. The board needs to approve the release of the $10,000 performance bond issued by Hanover Charity Group. There's charity against the project. Is there a motion to release? Uh, has the building inspector been out there yet? I believe it's all been signed off. That's what we had from Charlie's last meeting. Yeah, he said it was all signed off. I'll move it. Is there a second? second? All those in favor, aye? Aye. All right, Chief. Hello, just um, giving a brief update on holidays in Halifax event this year. Uh, we will be having an event. It's going to be December 11th um, from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, it's going to be a little different than we've had in um, other years. The committee met. Um, obviously, we face a lot of challenges still with the um, pandemic going on and we just decided that it would be a would be best to, to have an all outdoor event this year so um we're, we've got bought a big christmas tree that we're going to put out in front of town hall uh, we're going to have a tree lighting ceremony um we will be having performances by the silver lake chorus um and the bell ringers we'll have the ice sculpture set out out front um clydesdale horses um, we're going to have some other farm animals out there. There'll be a large movie set up on the, um, across at the, the library parking lot. Um, and one of the things we are doing different this year is we'll have food truck vendors um, lined up along the um, parking lot of the, of the library. Um, 
still having the girls, girl and boy scouts particip uh, participating in the Salvation Army will be participating as well. I'm sure I'm leaving a couple things out, but um, we'll, and then we'll still be decorating the street with the um, luminaries. Having an all-outdoor event, we did incur some additional expenses, and I just want to mention that we've had some really great sponsors this year. Rockland Trust, um, Northeastern Savings Bank, um, Flower, Flower and Soul, and, um, and Brian Wall have all made um, contributions to this year's event. We should send a thank you letter to Prometheus. Yeah. Is that a motion? Yes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Do you need anything from us? What are you thinking? No, I think, you know, we just want everyone to be safe that night and um, hopefully we'll have a good turnout. Okay. Like Santa Claus. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I fit that one. I'm just saying we'll put it out there for volunteers. We want to be Santa Claus. You, you want to volunteer for Santa Claus? Is that what you just said? You want to volunteer? I want to do an elf. I want to be elf. On the shelf. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you. All right. Steve, it's not here yet. Not here yet. All right. So we have to decide who's going to do which inspections for the annual inspection. Pam provided us a list. Um, so. In the years past, I did 55 uh, tavern. Um, 550. 550, yes. That was there. Thanks. Uh, Happy Dragon. Are you volunteering yourself for these, or are you just yeah. talking about being outside? Yes, so I can do um, Halifax Mobile. I did that one last time. The other one you said? 550. Yeah. Halifax Mobile. And Happy Dragon. Happy Dragon. Okay. Does anybody else want to? Out to the country club. These. Can do. Yeah. I can do how many, too? Two along the same plot. We should do it. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the unit five. That's on the same plot. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, and then, uh, Troy, can we go through? Did you see that? The Troy, Lindy's Troy, Lionville, yep. and um, Montpontin Street. That's uh, Twin Lakes. Can you do it? left over. Yeah, that, that, that was a little left over. Okay. Okay. Does that take care of your list, Pam? Yeah, we got everybody. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have it with you guys. Well, then we said that yep. they need to be okay. completed by the December 14th meeting. Okay. Okay. Um. So we have to arrange a date and a time for the field visit to the Brockton Dam on right. Stump Brook. That was an item that we needed to talk about. Is there a certain date or time that works best? That's before it snows. You don't know when that's going to happen. You better do that quick, then. <laughs> yeah, so some free time next month or this month. So you want me to reach out for the week after oh, Thanksgiving? Yeah. All right, yeah. I'll reach out and I'll ask you guys what those were. Okay, and then um, we have the elementary school building project. We have contract amendment number three with Vertex, so I believe yes. Yes. we need to vote with that. I had to go in order, so I clipped it, so just keep on clicking the paper, but it's towards the front. You have to clip it. This one. Mm -hmm. That's the short one. Short one. Short one. 
Give it to um, Troy. Slide it down here. I'll the ones on the other Sorry, side. I'll pull from them. You just go. I'll need to sign or is it? Um, yeah. It just has one, so I'll just right. imagine. So is there a motion to allow the chair to sign yeah. contract amendment number three with Vertex? Yeah. So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 All right. So you yes. Sign that. Transfer from the state. Okay, that was just the update. All right, so it says Hello, Charlie. I just want to let you know that we received the executed deeds. I will prepare for the commissioner to sign when she's in the office next week. So that's the update that we have. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. Okay. Um, so we have set the wage rate for the recording secretary for the board of selectmen. Advertise discussion on advertising and hiring. So what exactly is this individual going to be doing? So Pam had asked that uh, we get some help in the office so that we can get some older meetings that need to be meeting minutes created. So we've had a lot of meetings with COVID and over the past year and a half. So she asked for some help to get caught up. So the board, of, the finance committee approved the previous. So you get that motion. Finance committee authorized between grade two, step one at 1512 to grade four, step one at 1692. Okay. Approval could come as an ungraded position without steps. Board want to do the same. Either way, it's got to get be approved by the finance committee. Well, th that was the money. Money. that was that was their motion. That's what I'm saying. Money. If we go some different direction, we we'll get that. I move that we approve the recommendation of the finance committee. Okay. I second. second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. So then we need to post the job. come up and talk about issue with plow rates and well basically I wanted to see if I can go up on the plow rate for people I hire to drive our trucks. Uh, right now last year we're paying twenty eight I mean twenty dollars and thirty eight cents, which is uh Grade four, step five. I was compared to the other towns. <laughs> it's a joke. Do you have any numbers from the other towns? Uh, yeah, I actually got some for the 20s.
I've gone up each year trying to catch up, but our tax rate, you know, in comparison to the town. So the second page gives you all the uh, the averages on what other towns pay. And I'm five dollars five dollars under every other town basically on an average. Did you hear back about the insurance? No. No. Okay. I've asked a couple of the towns if they none of the other towns do that either. Okay. But that second slip there, that has um, the different towns around here, what they pay. Yeah. I've actually gone up on that. So I'm, most of them are a dollar under now. Okay. So I'm trying to catch up that way. But what I'm asking for tonight is the people that use our trucks. So I hire people to come in. We have four extra trucks. And we're going to have one big truck this year because the recycle person doesn't work for the highway anymore. Okay. So I want to have that one a different step. So the, uh, the one-ton trucks, I'd like to go up to um, 2334. And no, that's the, uh, sorry, that's the one-tons. The CDL hoisting license, they go up to 2505, I mean 2503. That's if we go on the, the union wages. If I go, if I have to stay on wage and personnel, I change it to grade seven, step five, which is 2394. And uh, the CDL would be grade eight, step five, 2575. But I don't even know if I can do that with the wage and personnel. I think we need to vote each person individually. I haven't even put the names out because I don't know what we're going to pay them. Sandy? Usually the, um, the car drivers who come in and drive the town trucks, but they only come in for snowstorms. They're not usually... Um, but do we usually on start on a different wage rate? I'm, I, well, they're using our vehicles, our gas. Right, right. but it's always been the highest payer who's been able to set So you're paying them, paying them in, in the 20s or more right. just for the fact that they're gassing up? Right, they, I mean, it's, it's not like it's a contractor that they're using their own equipment. Mm -hmm. But you can't even get summer help now. I get one kid to show up to, for an applicant, you know. So I'm trying to make it a little bit better by asking for more money to pay the people. I mean, I'm not asking like the state, they pay 300 something dollars a truck. Well, there is a shortage of personnel yeah. around the country, so. So you're saying that it's up to him? I think so. I, I, I don't remember seeing, I mean, we have something for a part-time laborer whether they consider it that or not, but the, the plow drivers have always been treated a little So I guess it's differently. up to you. Then. It, it all comes out of snow and ice anyway, so yeah. it's a separate. But I just wanted to make sure I don't want to step over somebody to... I, I think if you can't get people, you got to do what you can do to get the roads plowed and sanded, so... Right. And I'm not asking, like I said, it's not going to be a million dollars. It's three dollars more an hour for one and five for the other one. Well, it sounds like it's up to up to you what you do with it. So thanks for letting us know that you have the issue. And All right. I move that we support him in his efforts. Okay. I second. Stay away from that $300 truck thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. All those in favor of aye? Aye. Good. Right. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. All right. So we have a public records request policy. Mm -hmm. uh, was, we received the draft from council. Yes. So. Everyone had a chance to review it. Okay. I don't know if you want to see it. I looked at it. 
return an email. So my suggestion to the board was to approve this policy and then uh, plan a date with Brooks and Dorensis to do a training and then some follow-up trainings in coordination with Brooks and Dorensis in the state. I move it. I'll second it. I really didn't say anything that was really out, out of place. Jack will be the earliest to do training. This is on public records? Yeah. Yes. Um, we just walked in this year, started to discuss it. Good timing. What would be convenient for you? I'm sure we could work something out. And do you have a you. preference? Sure. I mean, obviously, after the Thanksgiving Thanksgiving holiday, maybe, maybe after Christmas, it's up to you. Doing the daylight hours? Yeah, I think. Your yeah. preference? Nine. Okay. Early hours. All right. Well, why don't we send out an email to the department heads and to the chairs of the boards and the vice chairs and let them know we're scheduling the appointment. We want them to attend. What date? Do you got a date in mind, Jack? <laughs> You like Tuesdays, right? I probably right? want to confer with Paul, too, to see if he wants someone else to participate as well in the training. Okay. But um, if you're just asking for my availability, how far out do you want me to look, Mr. Chairman? First and second week in December, I guess? Sure. Mm -hmm. I can do Monday the 6th. I have a bargaining session scheduled here on the 8th. That's good for me. I can also Sixth. do the 9th. Is Monday or Thursday a day better for you? Monday. Monday? I want to shoot for the 6th for now. We'll follow up with the rest of the staff and with Paul and then go from so there. 9 a.m. Monday? Yep. Okay. Send that out. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so then we have OCPC confirming whether Selectman Garen is the regular delegate representative or is there a vacancy? There's a vacancy. <laughs> Died for 20, 25 years. Ago. All right. Sounds like something you might like to do, Gordon. Nope. When do they typically meet, Troy? Usually on a Monday night or Wednesday. John, for the now, Troy, is this like a delegate at large, so it could be someone from the community, or is it someone from the board itself? From the There's board. a couple of them. It's a, it's a, it comes from the board. From the board, okay. okay. Fine. I'll let you take it. You're so kind. Is, is there a motion to, for Mr. Cesar to be delegate? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We have a 7 o'clock appointment for Mr. Thorne. Thorne. Come on up. How are you doing? So, uh, Mr. Thorne said he'd be willing to be the interim town administrator. He certainly has the background uh, working in Pembroke for over 25 years. 21. 21. Um, 
do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in the position? Yeah, I've uh, been in the business uh, about 40 years, starting uh, as an assistant in North Carolina, and then uh, after a brief stint with uh, the uh, East Carolina University in both the health field and the uh, athletic department, uh, I was an assistant director of Pirate Club, so I was in charge of fundraising for the athletic department, and I'm kind of proud that you're going to be playing Friday afternoon in Cincinnati, so it's on national TV, so it's great. Um, but I actually got really serious when I went to West Virginia in 1982. I was a uh, first town administrator in Ransom, West Virginia, which is in the Eastern Panhandle outside of DC. And then a couple, you know, I was there two and a half years or so, and then I took a, a county manager's job in the northern part of West Virginia outside of Pittsburgh. And I was the first county administrator there. And then uh, my dear late friend, Rocco Longo, he was the town manager in Duxbury and uh, Marshfield. Um, he and I kind of got to know each other in West Virginia. And he kind of talked me into coming up to Massachusetts the first time. And I was in Leicester and in Westboro. And then uh, I, I really enjoyed Westboro, but uh, the, job at Fairwall, West Virginia opened up and it was, uh, you know, was kind of like going to my second home, West Virginia, so I went back and I was in the state for another 10 years. And then I was helping out a mayor in Ransom, my first job, to train a guy that had gotten out of the Army and wanted to be a city manager and had no experience. And so the mayor said, why don't you come over, train him, you can stay as long as you want. And then I was there about six, seven months, and then Rocco sent me a copy of the Beacon, and it was when Pembroke decided to go to their town administrator. And he circled it, and he goes, this is next door to Duxbury. And I went, oh no, not again, because the uh, Worcester Telegram did a big story about these two guys in West Virginia. When he was in North Carolina and I was in Westboro, and so uh, they, you know, they did a big thing, and then of course Rocco sends a human. He ends the uh, the uh, column by saying, "Oh yeah, I want everybody to know Ed's a Lakers fan." And those were the heydays when the Celtics and the Lakers were playing each other. So. But anyway, so um, so I I went to uh, Pembroke uh, as the first town administrator, and uh, that was in the fall of '98, and. Uh, you know, 21 years later, and 17 different selectmen, and, um, and then we got the town charter changed to go to a town manager for the government. So I became the first town manager. And uh, so you know, 21 years later it was like, you know, time to kind of walk out and uh, go from there. So, okay. and, and I received a phone call from somebody about the position here being an interim. And I said, yeah, let me think about that. And, uh, and then Mr. Andrews you know, gave me a call and said, uh, I heard you might be interested. And I said, I'm thinking about it. I'm really thinking about it. And then the more I met, and knowing Halifax like I do, even though I told Mr. Andrews that this is the first time I've been in this building. Uh, and, I, and I've known Charlie Seeley for all the years I was in Pembroke. Um, but uh, and Charlie was kind enough to go to my uh, this little ceremony that he had for me a year ago where I got a proclamation from the legislature and the International City Managers Association and all that. Charlie was one of a handful of managers that was able to break the COVID thing and come over there to the ceremony that was held on the front lawn with masks on and all that so but it was it was kind of tough to leave in Pembroke but um, and when I did leave it was in the middle of the pandemic so there was even hardly anybody in town hall I mean I remember my assistant you know town manager she just kind of waved at me said, see ya that was the end of that. It was a farewell ceremony. You know, every 20, 21 years. So, anyway, um, I'd be 
I'd be honored and, and happy to help the town of Halifax out in, in the transition. So, okay. and I think if any of the chiefs get a call over to Pembroke. Nah. Oh, we will. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's your management style? Pardon? Management style. Um, well, I, I, think, I, I, I take a lot of it from my upbringing in, in New Jersey and, and being in athletics all the years that I was in, you know, and I played baseball in East Carolina, and, and I was never the best player on the team, but somehow I made all Southern Conference two years in a row. So, and we had like eight or nine guys that played professional baseball, uh, including one guy that made it to the major leagues. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a team kind of guy. I mean, I, I think that all the department heads will find that out. I remember when I had my first department head meeting in Pembroke, and um, you might remember Jim Neenan. Oh, yeah. And, and Jim was sitting to my, to my left, and he was Jim Neenan. He's a big, you know, tough kind of guy. And he looked at me like, who are you? You know, what are you going to bring to the table? And I went, look, Chief, I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. I'm here to help you do your job. And that's, and that's the way it was for the 20 years that I worked at Bumper. You know, you could, any department head will tell you that open door policy, you know, you know, was all part of, you know, every, everybody's part of the team. And uh, that's, that's the way what my style was. You know, if I had to be tough, I, I could be tough, but I didn't, yeah, that wasn't my style. You know, and uh, so I, th I think that the I think the department heads and the staff would enjoy working with me. Thank you. Ashley, you have any questions? How do you feel about dealing with disgruntled anybody, employees, committee members, residents? How are you with confrontation? Or not to I didn't get it. How are you with confrontation if somebody is upset or angry about something? How do you deal with that? Uh, you know, in the, in the almost 40 years that I've been in the business, yeah, there have been a couple of tough situations. Um, and I think uh, use a lot of thought into the, the process of making a decision for the employee and for the organization in town. Um, you know, different kinds of things have happened over over the years. You know, we've actually, I had an employee commit murder. You know, um, in one of the places that I worked. Um, so, you know, and, and others have, you know, maybe had uh, run-ins with the law and things like that. So, uh, um, there's not really a whole lot that I haven't seen. Um, so I think that I would just use my expertise and my experience to, uh, to go get through the process so that uh, the, the resolution is in the best interest of the community. Okay. You have anything? Sure. Nothing for us. Should be looking to work five days a week, or what? what is? Whatever the board wants. Um, you know, I, you know, I've got a couple of commitments coming down the pike, like for a day, like whether it's a doctor's appointment yeah. or getting my car serviced, you know, things like that. But, you know, so I wouldn't expect to be paid for not being here at Town Hall. Okay. So, um, but, um, but if, if the board wants a five day a week person, I'm fine, you know, or three days or Charlie four Charlie worked like seven, so <laughs> that's what we're going with here. No. Okay. Um. I like him. Okay. I'm moving. Wait to move. Um. What what is the process typically, Jack, to move forward with the with an interim? Yeah. 
Uh, there's not a prescribed process. It's whatever you wish to establish. Um, you could consider a number of candidates. You consider one. You know, it depends uh, not only on what you want to do, but also how long you want to do that. You know, what's the period of time you're looking at? If you anticipated a six month or 12 month interim position, you, you know, you'd probably talk to a number of candidates. If you're looking for somebody to immediately step into the role and you have somebody who's experienced and relatively local, there's no reason you can't do that. Okay. Uh, it's really your, your choice. It's not like uh, other roles or other positions where you, if you're hiring an outside consultant, for example, you have procurement processes to go through, not, not so with this. Okay. Because you'd be looking at an employment situation. Okay. Um, I think you might want somebody on board definitely before town meeting. We want somebody on board soon, yeah, so. You know, the permanent person, you know, okay. for town meeting and definitely. So um, are you in the process of hiring so we, a we, consultant to, to do the search and all that? So we signed the contract with Paradigm. Okay. And uh, after we... We approved it the previous meeting. <coughs> then, uh, then Bernie gave me your number mm -hmm. uh, to give you a call. So, um, I know the department heads have been started to been contacted. Uh, the survey is going out there. So the process, he had said we'd be probably be doing the interviews in January and February. Mm -hmm. So, probably sometime depending upon the alignment of how long it would take somebody to come on from leaving their other position. Sure. So our our annual meetings in May second week. Right. So. Yeah, I've worked with Bernie. Um, we hired his uh, firm to do a couple of programs for us that we receive funding under the Community Compact Program. Yep. And so uh, they did like a long range financial plan. In fact, one of, when we reorganized, like my department, we had. Uh, assistant town manager, and then we had an uh, ADA coordinator who was a grant person as well. And uh, he worked with uh, Bernie's firm to do the long range financial plan uh, that turned out to be really good for us. Okay. And uh, so, you know, and, uh, and of course, I knew Bernie when he was city manager in Lowell and on the channels for me. We have an executive session scheduled tonight to come up with a contract. Um, I think there. Are, did you make a motion to offer Mr. Thorne a position? Yeah. Is there a second? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So we, Thank you very much. Um, Honored to be here. So I guess we will come up with a contract. Uh, typically, yeah, I, I assume your motion implies that this is subject to successful contract negotiations. Yeah. With this so so we'll, we'll work with Jack this evening. Sure. And um, I'll give you a call tomorrow and um, see what we can do to come to a negotiated contract. If that works for you. That works. We look forward to working with you guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sure. Ten minutes, that's what I need for going to the gym too much. Well, at least it's not nine. Pardon? At least it's not nine. Ten. Thank you very much. Appointment of ADA coordinator for all departments except for Halifax Elementary School. So we want to hold off on that until we negotiate with Mr. Thorne. Is that fine? Yes. Okay. We have sustainable materials recovery program grant for six thousand six hundred. We have to sign and accept the grant. Is there a motion to 
Is that all of us on him, Tim? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 The grant agreement, emergency management performance grant, fire department, authorized the chair to sign. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Chief Rivera. Sweetness. Um, so we have Joy Marble filled out a talent bank for the ADA committee. Do we want to schedule her to come in or? I don't think we need to have Joy come in. Okay. You want to make a motion to appoint her? So Is there a second? How many other open vacancies? Yeah. Yeah, there's, four. there's four vacancies. Yeah. Okay. I second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Um, there's a request by Flower and Soul for a 30-day public comment period for all marijuana retail HCAs. Um, so they had sent in a memo uh, requesting that. We have. Rodriguez versus Halifax Board of Assessors decision by Appellate Tax Board. Is that in this folder? No, I didn't write it here. This is all I have. That was it. So it's just a notification? Yeah. Okay. Um, so then we have police department resignation of special police officer Herbert Wiltshire. So can we send a letter? Move Thank you. Sure. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Okay. So and then we have a chapter 40B, Country Club Estates, update on the continuance. So I saw that there was a email. Uh, it was an email requesting a 60-day continuance to January of 2021. So that's just an update. So then we have 715 Old Plymouth Street alleged junk vehicles and junk materials report from site visit and discussion. So we did do a site visit. Um, all the vehicles were registered. Um, we were given proof of that by email. It was questions on the, some of the materials that was on the web on the um, on the site itself. Um, Mr. Parsons, would you like to? Uh, those materials are no longer considered hazardous. They've been dismantled and taken apart. Photos have been sent over, and everything is out of the elements. Okay. So we have no more problems with that. Okay. Um, Mr. Parson started doing a fence. Yes, I did. The rest of the post holes are dug so that the permafrost won't mm -hmm. hold me up. Hopefully this weekend I will be purchasing all the fence panels and everything up to that 10 fence panels will be up. Okay. And I have, <clears throat> I have also talked to my next neighbor and I'm allowed to continuous, continue his fence all the way down to the corner to where the hydrant is and in, into my property. Okay. So. I guess just check 
where it's close to the hydrant with a yeah, yeah, uh, fire chief with five feet away from it, yeah, around the circumference of the fire hydrant, or is it 10 feet? Um, I think it's 15 feet, but if you can call my office, I can double check that by law tomorrow. That by law. All right, thank you. Uh, Chief, we have a discussion on the animal shelter proposed Wakeville Halifax animal shelter. Yeah, it's the uh, uh, contract we signed with the VA. The only change is the increased the fee to board the dogs from 15 to 25. Um, we've, we've actually only surrendered one dog this past year. Okay. The dog that was involved in a, in a dog bite incident. So the uh, the owner, um, the owner actually requested uh, to surrender the dog themselves, and it was shipped off there. Um, I don't think the contract is, is the same as before. We no really no issues. The only thing is I have um, trying to get a price on the Kingston shop to see what their cost is. It doesn't affect the town itself. It's just basically the, the, the residents. Okay. Uh, so it, it'll get to the board to decide whether they want to sign the contract for another year or just you know. Um, I know that Lakeville does uh, have a contract with a lot of the towns, so the, the only concern is that if we have an emergency and we need to shelter a dog, we may not have any availability there. Okay. Other than that, it's kind of, you know. I would like to same. look into Kingston before we sign this. What do we have left on that current contract? Uh, it's ex like, uh, Let's see. January 1st. January 1st? Expired, expired on January 1st. Well, December 30. December yeah. 31st. So the rest of the year. So. I can check with Kingston, get a price, and then you guys can decide. Okay. So Thank we'll you. add this to the next meeting then for a decision? Yes. Okay. We have signature authorization. Payrolls, payables, highway, and cemetery departments. Okay. Yeah. All three of you guys sign. Well, who's signing for now? I think this is just the. Steve signed in case of an option. Thompson. This is the cemetery beats one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we've got surplus property, library, HP, 7, 8730 office printer broken. Is there a motion to declare surplus? So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay, we've got cemetery deeds, one to sign, one to buy back. So hold on to that, two to sign. So those two right there. Thank you. And then. So the buy back, is there someone that like chopped the over there? <laughs> I, I don't know. Pam? No. There's information on it. Thank you. Yeah. I think you got to vote on that one. So sign those two, and I move to approve the buyback. So we have to vote on that. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. It's empty, right? The one we're buying back. <laughs> Not trying to buy a body. She just won't need them. She has enough space in her other ones, she said, so we're good there. Okay. Thank 
go. Uh, we have United Elevator, two maintenance contracts to sign. Yeah, I think the other one signed it, so there's two. Mm -hmm. okay. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Caesar, we have uh, discussion, possible decision for opera slash CARES funds to purchase an interactive display um, to facilitate interactive Zoom, Google Meets, Microsoft Teams meetings, et cetera. Correct. So right now, upstairs, we don't have anything. Uh, in here, we have that display screen, which yes. is just a regular TV, but that's actually going out to the front lobby of Town Hall to be used to replace the bulletin board. Sorry, my nose <laughs> um, So to con continue doing the hybrid meetings, yep. I wanted to get something that would, <clears throat> one, allow us to be able to do hybrid upstairs, as well as replace the projector, and also continue doing it in this room. Okay. So the uh, display that I'm trying to get would be interactive, so it would be almost like a whiteboard, similar to the smart boards that the schools have. So if there is a presentation or a board's working on plans or some document, they'd be able to write or draw on it. Uh, it allows people to connect to it hardwired, wirelessly, for presentations. And then you have the basic, what we're doing now, um, allowing the presenters to show up on the screen and communicate. Okay. Uh, it is on rolls, it is on a rolling cart, so we'll be able to move around the town hall um, as needed. What, what is the cost that you're looking to be approved? Uh, right now, the one I'm looking at, I believe, is, I want to say, 5000 Well, it's with everything that comes out with 5000 That includes the display, the built-in uh, Windows computer, the um, wireless adapter, the rolling cart. How many boards are actually using Zoom and all this besides us? The conservation was going to, but... Mm -hmm. uh, well, we did today. We got something set up because one of, the, <clears throat> one of their members wasn't able to make it. But so having that there would have been... I know that it would be useful for the school meetings as well. Yeah, but the school's not going to pay for it. Well, I, I do think you need something better than the projector that we're using now upstairs. Because it's got to be at least 12 years old. More. Is that the only place that you've gone to look for a bid? I'm sorry? Is that the only place you've gone to look for a bid? These, the, the screen that I'm actually looking into is one of the cheaper models. Um, it's through ViewSonic. Uh, it's not the name brand smart boards that the school have. It's a monitor company that makes interactive displays. Um, but the, the price that we got is off a of state contract. So, you know, they, they, they have the appropriate discounts and whatnot. How long would it take you to incorporate the system that's already here? Uh, if it's in stock, which is likely not, um, 
once it's delivered, we'd hook it up and we'd have it ready in a week. You know, that's that's a that's an overshot estimate. That's just like, taking into taking into consideration the amount of work I have. Oh. Thanks. Yeah. Is there a motion to approve, or do you want to <coughs> wait? I just don't know if we're going to utilize it. I think all boards would have to get on board with doing it. I think it's great if we're going to use it, but I don't know about spending $5,000 on something that's going to sit in this room or sit in the office. Or Then I understand. It's not, this is, I can tell you from what I've been told by the planning board, their intentions are to use it at least every meeting. And I know Amy's here, so I know that they have been asking for a projector in their meeting room, and I've held off to get something like this. And the projector we have right now, and the projector that they have, is you know antiquated. It's not you know you're we'd be putting effort in installing hardware and purchasing a screen. So what happens if we have more than one meeting going on in one screen? I think. We need to do a better job of scheduling if that's going to happen. There will just be a schedule um, agreement, I guess. All the, right now, all the boards and committees, the only boards and committees that conflict with each other as of this very moment, for at least this building, Us is conservation, conservation yeah. and uh, the board select. Right. Okay. I can tell you that conservation specifically is not going to be doing much of the hybrid unless it's necessary. Okay. Um, but the main boards, the Board of Selectmen, Planning Board, uh, on occasion the Board of Health and uh, zoning. Do you think you can used. physically make sure that every meeting we have is also Zoomed? Can we do that? Yeah. Yes. If we're going to invest in this, then it would yeah. make sense to give the community access to all the meetings. So, do you want to do you want to vote on this tonight, or you want to wait until the next meeting? Are we going to have any more definitive information by the time the next meeting comes around? Do you, you want to provide us a printout of what it is that it looks like? And I can tell you waiting the next meeting is probably not going to be a problem. It's probably not so. Okay. Okay. So we have a 7.30 meeting that we need to start. So do you want to... Are you guys accepting public comment? For, for Comcast, yes. Okay. Um, okay. So I need, I need to read the... Uh, so, is Mr. August on? I will check. All right, so I'll open the hearing. Uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts Town of Halifax public hearing on cable television license renewal November 23rd 2021 good evening welcome to the Hel Town of Halifax public hearing on Comcast cable license renewal this hearing is a part of the cable license renewal process to ascertain the community's cable related needs notice of this hearing was in the local newspaper two, su two successful successive weeks and notices on the town's website, copies of the legal advertisements are herein entered into the hearing record as ascertainment hearing exhibits one and two. By way of background for the public, Comcast Town of Halifax cable television license expires on April 21st, 2024. Federal and state law require the holding of public ascertainment proceedings, including this hearing. We will receive comments and testimony from the public interested persons about what cable related needs and interests are important to the public, about how Comcast has performed under its existing license. Before proceeding to public comment, I would like to thank the members of the public, Area 58, the nonprofit community, TV studio, and Comcast for their participation and assistance with the ongoing license renewal proceedings. In this proceeding, we are open to accept to accepting comments about all cable related matters. 
of interest to the public, including but not limited to customer service, license administration, the town's needs regarding the local studio, community programming, and the public, educational and governmental access, and maintaining support for the town's video origin capabilities. Please keep your comments no longer than four minutes. Please note that this process of ascertainment of the cable needs and interests will remain open until further notice so that the pub, so even after the closing of tonight's hearing, the public will have further opportunity to submit comments into the license renewal record for consideration by the town and its licensing process. Before proceeding with public comment period, if Comcast representative Michael Gallia is here, Please let me know. Caesar, is he? No? Okay. Um, at this time, we will proceed to going right into public comment process. Please starting with those on the sign up sheet. We will have time to hear from any other persons who want to speak who have not signed up on the sign in sheet. If you're participating, Remotely, please signal by your interest by clicking on the raise hand icon in the Zoom toolbar. Thank you, and let us proceed to the hearing from the public in interest. Um, Would you like to hear from me? Sure. Can you just um, state your name? Yes, and I'm Richard Goulart. I'm the executive director of Area 58, community access media that serves the three towns, uh, Halifax, Pembroke, and Harvard. Uh, and I've got all this organized until I try to hand it out and I'm lost. Oh, great, thank you. Uh, was there a motion to open the hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Thank you. I'm going to hand it down to make it easier. Might as well. That's easier. So what you've got here is a very simple breakdown on the top page of the um, Budget broken down into a few different areas, followed by the following thing is the capital purchases since 2015. Yeah. And then uh, lastly, 10 year projected capital expenses. Carver current, not rather, Halifax currently receives 5% of the uh, revenue from um, Comcast brought in. That is the maximum that is allowed generally speaking, and Halifax also gets $25,000 capital each year. Um, over the 10-year period, we're basically looking for something in a similar vein, certainly 5% to remain the same. And uh, while we can justify more than that for uh, capital, we know they're not going to go higher than that Okay. At Comcast. Um, if we can get level funded on that, we'd be happy to be asking for chances. Okay. John or Dick? Well, the other thing that we'd be looking for is an HD channel. Thank you, yeah. yeah. And generally speaking, at this point, the contest has been open to giving one HD channel to all the communities they're relicensing with. Um, Comcast is the only current provider that is looking at 10 year um, contracts, whereas uh, Verizon in other communities has gone by. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Is that Attorney August? Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm here. Do, do you have anything for us? Yes. Um, the one, one procedural thing, the Comcast representative just uh, texted me that he could not um, access the meeting. He's trying to. Um, I also had a little difficulty. I had to go to the Zoom homepage uh, rather than uh, just entering the link. So that, um, that's why there may be a little delay with the Comcast person. But uh, I, I'll just say by way of introduction, uh, good evening, it's good to be here. This is uh, Bill August. I'm with Epstein and August LLP. 
and my uh, partner Peter Epstein has worked with Halifax for many, many years, and I do many of these uh, renewals. We the, pur the purpose of tonight's hearing is to, uh, as required by the uh, Cable Act, uh, merely to allow the public an opportunity to be heard. So the, there's no decision making tonight by the Board of Selectmen in terms of uh, acceptance or rejection of licensing matters or actual negotiations. This is the early stage hearing as uh, uh, I uh, stated in the opening statement to, uh, ident to help identify needs. So we hear from the public and interested persons like the uh, uh, community uh, studio access corporation uh, area of 58. And so we're here to listen. The ascertainment record can stay open after the closing of the hearing, even though a hearing is supposed to close by a time certain. Under the Cable Act, the ascertainment of needs is an ongoing process until further notice. So the public is welcome to submit additional comments. In terms of identifying needs, that's literally the whole concept of the renewal statute in terms of ascertainment. So the Board of Selectmen um, and the uh, Rich Goulart and his team and the, the Access Corporation should be focusing on educating the Selectmen and uh, myself about your needs, which usually have to do with four areas, the annual support for the studio, the uh, capital uh, facilities funding, which is separate from the annual funding. The hot item now in renewal negotiations is also getting a high definition peg access channel and maintaining whatever local video origination sites you have for remote uh, video origination. Um, and then there's a whole host of other areas. Again, it's an early stage ascertainment process um, and so that's just my overview of, the, of where we are now. Does this cover the, the internet access as well, or is it just the cable TV portion of the... Oh, the, the franchising, uh, the, uh, the, the renewal franchising is restricted to uh, cable. Uh, we're legally... Uh, cannot regulate the internet or telephony in the cable license. Um, however, um, you know, it, that does not mean that we cannot gather information about it, but we shouldn't have the expectation that that can translate into license terms and conditions. For informational purposes, if someone from the public has something to share, about internet access or telephone, the town can uh, it, it convey that information back to Comcast. Their representative tries to be responsive. It's just not part of the renewal process, but it can be part of a conversation and lobbying of Comcast. Um, so it's, it, it's in a separate category, but it doesn't mean we have to uh, sit on our hands and do nothing about it. I, I just think from the town's perspective, it would be nice to see an upgraded upload speed from Comcast. Right now, it's caused a number of issues with Zoom uh, throughout the number of meetings that we've had. We've had uh, town department heads have to leave and go home to join a meeting because we can't have that many people on a 35 gig, a 35 meg upload. So it's been an issue for us here. Right, it's possible that, you know, the different companies have different upgrade business plans. Well, we don't have regulatory power over it. Um, it's, it's possible that there 
you know, it, 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 that there is something going on with that. I don't know, but it's worth it's worth inquiring. As we know from the pandemic experience, the issue you're raising, you know, is uh, you know about more than internet these days. The internet is like a it was a lifeline for a lot of people for just even you know seeing their doctors or attending a class so oh, oh, those are good questions okay did the comcast representative join us caesar yeah, let me I, hold on he's, he's, he's sent me this text which i don't know i'm gonna be texting right now hold on I'm going to call him okay. and explain how I did it. I had to go to the Zoom homepage, which got me in by putting in the meeting ID rather than the link. Okay. Mr. Chairman, can I speak to Bill? Sure. Bill, uh, I've got some documents that I'm going to forward over to you and Mike. After well, you might, uh, you might have to come up to the mic okay. over here. Did you, Mike, I, I got in a new way. I, I, let me mute myself. Hold on. I'm not to hear they're the same ones I gave you guys. If you want to forward them, don't let them know the same. Okay. Thanks, Gordon. Yeah, the um, one of the things that, at least an input to this, I mean, we're looking at a 10-year contract renewal, correct? There are issues that you're experiencing right now that you're not going to have to deal with for the next 10 years. Well, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and whether it or not Comcast is doing any upgrades as part of its business plan. Not that we regulate it, but just to be informed and find out if there are any opportunities for upgrading the speeds. Can, can you speak to that? Yeah, Bill, I, again, if you talk to us about part of the legal process, we're happy to uh, put somebody in touch with the town tomorrow that can certainly handle that on our business side and can look at uh, their speed options and can kind of roll with that. Um, I, don't, I don't personally handle that aspect, um, but I can certainly get somebody in touch that does. Thank that you. Sounds good. All right, so we'll all follow up on that. Thank you. Is there anybody else here that has comment on Comcast? Caesar, is there anybody with their hand up? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me now, Susan? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, good evening, Selectman. Um, I just wanted to say that Comcast is using Aldelphia's old equipment. They've never made an upgrade in town. They, not only is there a problem with the remote learning school, um, I, was, I was on the first hybrid meeting for conservation tonight and had glitches and I'm one of the members that was at home. But their customer service things, their prices are outrageous for what they offer. Um, and they can never seem to get anything right. Um, I won't go into detail in my personal situation, but I had to have a switch in my services. And the, it's either the internet works and the cable and the phone don't, or the internet doesn't work and the phone line doesn't, and that includes 911, which is against the law for Comcast. Um, so I'd rather see the town not renew the license with Comcast. And even if we had to spend the extra money to go satellite or any other options, it would be better for us and we'd get more for our money. I mean, if we go round and round with Comcast every year previous to the new board and I thank you for asking the hard questions, um, but I'd also ask that we really look into other options before we just automatically renew with Comcast. Because really, we're using old Aldelphia equipment. It's 20 years old, and it's ridiculous. Okay, thank you. And Amy? I was just curious um, whether or not we could maybe make it a shorter contract to make sure that we are happy with things and keep our options open. Maybe cut it in half. Just as a thought process to put it out there. Okay. Is there anyone else? Mr. Millius? I have my same lament that I've had for years. I'm not arguing Comcast or not Comcast. I think the public should know who's paying for it and where the money's coming from. There is no definitive place on the Comcast bill that lets anybody know that they're paying for this. Every single subscriber to Comcast is paying a percentage of their bill under some obscure title for Comcast. I don't have a problem. I'm not advocating for it or against it. I'm just saying everybody should have the opportunity to know what it is costing them individually, and that never happens. Mr. Gala, did you hear the comment? It has to do with the bill portion. Or Mr. August, did you hear that? Are, are you specifically concerned about the uh, bill not identifying the um, payments that go to, uh, towards the town to support the local channels? Is that what your, is behind your question? Right. Yes, it's not identified anywhere on the bill. And if you were to call Comcast, they give you some obscure answer. They never directly address it. And, and it's one thing if only subscribers are getting the service, if they want it. They, there is no option. You can't opt out of it. 
but now it's available on YouTube too. So it's available to everybody. So the, I think the subscribers should know that they're paying for it. That it is right. free. You, I'm surprised because I've seen bills in other communities where it does say something like uh, franchise fee or fr our, okay, uh, no, franchise you? related fee. Um, I, I, so I, I'd love to, I, I'll follow up and look at the bill. Maybe, maybe it's there, but not self evident or it's not clear enough. In fact, I haven't, yeah, so, the, but um, I should, uh, just to put it in context, by the way, um, the history of that is that um, the cable companies do use the public ways, streets. They cut those streets, they dig in those streets. Um, it adds costs to the maintenance of the streets. So the theory behind it is that in return for using the streets, they should give something back to the town. Whether a subscriber watches the channel or wants those local channels, they all um, are users of a system which uses your public ways. So most towns believe that if a company uses our property and our streets, um, there should be some reasonable payment back to the town for use of the streets. Just like if you had private property and someone were to put a wire through your front lawn or a conduit, not, uh, you know, you would want there to be some consideration for using your property. So there's nothing very, it's, that that's the theory behind that little add-on to the bill is they're using a lot of town property so there is something going back to the town and in massachusetts it takes the form of being support for peg access because in massachusetts it can't go into the general fund so at least the subscribers do get some value out of it uh in terms of uh, the municipal meeting coverage, which, by the way, is uh, very competitive. There are like random sur there are surveys showing the viewership of uh, these local channels for municipal meetings and school sports is actually pretty high. So that, that's what's behind it all. It should be shown on the bill, which is really what you're saying. Mike Allen, do you know if it's shown on the bill? Can I? I'm, I'm, uh, I, I thought. I'm looking at one of our bills. I have one of them. I know our bills are pretty much, as you can imagine, a large company. We generate bills for a lot of towns and a lot of customers. So they're fairly standardized. Without looking specifically at it, I do not. So, can you come up to the mic? So is, your gen is your general practice to itemize it on the bill so if we wanted a clear itemization, it could be there, right? I don't think so, no. You what? We don't, we don't, we don't specifically get into the art, like, each town is not going to have specific things on the bill that they, they are requesting as we generate these bills. They're not generated locally. As you can imagine, they're generated for other no, but, but you do have something. You have something showing it in, in generic language. Gentlemen, can I interject here just briefly? Yeah, there is something on the bill that refers to a franchise fee. Now, if you went out and asked 100 people, none of them would know what that was for. My point is, specifically, it doesn't say this is your fee for Comcast, for, oh, okay. for, for community I, I, access I television. Okay. And, and by the way, you're using Verizon's poll, so I don't know what you know all that's going on about. But anyway, I, that was my point. We're getting way off the subject here. All I wanted was I would appreciate. I would like to see some identification so people know what they're paying for. That's all. Pretty simple. I'm not advocating. Okay. Right. Yes no, or no. I'm sorry, I understand. Yep. I understand.
That's a Thank very you. fair Thank request. You. you want to understand what, what that means there. Very, that's absolutely reasonable. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wright. And, uh, Tom, if I could just interject. I looked at my bill. I get my bill online. Uh, my bill is $230 a month. And there is a line that says access fee of $3.67. Just above that was another access fee uh, for 22 cents. So it's four dollars and 96 cents a month. It's a percentage. And that goes. Yeah. Well, I'm saying what my bill, yeah. bill is. I don't know if it's a percent or not. I can't compare to anybody else. And that franchise fee goes strictly to Area 58 to operate the studio. That's what that money is for. No, I understand. My question was. It isn't clear to anybody. If you look at your bill, you know it. I know it. But if you ask 100 people in town, I bet 99 of them have no idea what that means. And, probably, and that's all I was getting. At. There's probably a half a dozen items on there be yeah. between the taxes and the state this and out, that add up to $10 for this and $20 for that. There's, there is no explanation what those uh, cable licensing fees are, uh, state tax for whatever it is. So well, we have no control over that. I'm, all I'm saying is I think people, when we start making contracts for things over $200,000, people ought to know what they're spending it for. That's all. I, I'm not advocating for Comcast or not I'm advocating for. So Mr. Some transparency there. Mr. August, you, you got that feedback that we're looking for a little more notation on the note of what the different fees are? Yes. Okay. Does anybody else have any comments? Does anyone have any questions for me regarding um, Area 58 in general or uh, gentleman asked about uh, somebody else, and I believe one of the televiewers asked, well, why don't we get somebody else? Great idea. If anybody wants to go out and try and solicit Time Warner or Cox or any one of these other cable companies to come to Halifax, I, I encourage it. I have a condominium in Florida, and we just dropped, cut the cord, if you will, with Comcast, and we went with a company called Bluestream out of Cape Coral. And they supply us with cable, internet, and phone. Right. But can I mention one thing? <clears throat> the, the current license is completely non-exclusive. And we've never negotiated a renewal license that has any exclusivity whatsoever. So the, do the door is open to have another company come in, like Verizon competes with Comcast in about 130 towns. RCN competes with Comcast in about 15 towns and cities. Um, I, 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 I'm not saying that that completely addresses your comment, but just so folks know, in terms of uh, if you could roll out the red carpet to Verizon, because they compete in other communities, they would not show up anymore because they stopped adding on new systems and the same with RCN. So even if we were to invite a competitor in, it would be an uphill battle. But I just want you to know, legally, it's not because of exclusivity, it's because other companies aren't coming in and compete. What, what is the town in Florida where you uh, cut Comcast? Fort Myers. Are you saying that Fort Myers, that you individually cut Comcast, or are you saying the city got rid of Comcast? No, my community. My, what? My, my community. His where, where community. My my community is, my, you mean the whole city no, or your no, no, a homeowners just, association? Right. You made it sound like the city no. removed the cable company, and I haven't heard that. No, happening. I'm sorry. No, that that wasn't my. <laughs> his his homeowners my association. Just my condominium association. Okay, so one private owner, not right. like a municipality. Okay, because right. it's. I'm just saying to do that, you, you know, you're really uh, getting yourself into like. Uh, like a five-year plan of uh, legal activity to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so is there any other comments for Comcast? Uh, Mr. August, do we 
we close the hearing and we allow public comment to continue? Is there a date certain? Yeah, you, you, yes and no. <laughs> you, you close the hearing and you can leave comments for the hearing record uh, to come in by a date certain. However, the ascertainment record can stay open longer than the hearing record. Because even though the law regarding hearing says hearing records have to close by a date certain, the Cable Act specifically says you can keep the ascertainment process and record. So, so people can submit for the hearing record whatever date you pick, two weeks, one week, but they're free to submit written comments or any kind of exhibits um, on an ongoing uh, uh, basis um, until that stays open. Okay, Mr. Siobhan, how to Yes, does uh, Mr. Gal have any more questions for us? Does Mr. Gal have? I, I do not, thank you. Yeah, Mike and uh, Bill, this is Rich Goulart. I'll be sending you out a copy of the uh, documents I gave to the Board of Directors, uh, rather than the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Uh, he's going to, Rich is going to be sending you guys uh, three uh, documents that he prepared for the Board of Selectmen. He'll be emailing you those. Okay. Great. So whatever documents you get, please copy me. Uh, this is an ongoing process. Um, my door is always open uh, whenever you need me to discuss uh, these issues. And um, if someone could send me a copy of the bill, I'll talk to Mike on it. And I know Mike is... Uh, responsive when we talk to Mike about these kinds of issues. He's dealing with a big corporation. He can't decide things individually, but he'll follow through with us. Uh, as I know that from past experience. Okay. So we have a motion to close the hearing tonight and keep... Kim King has her hand raised. Kim, do you have your hand raised again, or is that from previous? She's muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we could hear you before, too. Okay. Um, no, it's new. Um, um, Mr. Uh, Stephen was talking about the roads and how the fees and other things pay for our roads and other things. And I'm just curious if the Board of Selectmen and others can reach out to our legislator and the Utility Commission and other things, because it's just another extra fee on top of multiple taxes we already pay for road use and other things. Um, and I'd just like more clarification of it. Actually, I'd like to see it not be able to happen from utility companies, because we pay excise taxes, we pay our town taxes for the roads, and um, so many other things that I right, don't no, think. I, right, I was not saying that it's you, right. you, yeah, go ahead. That I don't think it's right to have extra fees, not only from Comcast, but it's national grid and everybody else that can get their hands on it because they abuse it and i don't think it's right at all and i think not only halifax but all the municipalities need to stick together and talk to the utility commission and talk to our legislators especially after a pandemic where every single person regardless of race religion or economic standpoints is facing hardships like in it, I just find it completely ridiculous, and I'd just like to see a little more investigation go into it. Okay. Um, so is there a motion to close the hearing tonight and keep the ascertainment hearing continued for public comment until December 10th? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, aye? Aye. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. So one uh, last comment, uh, Mr. Chairman. If anyone needs to get in touch with me or would like to discuss anything about the Public Access Corporation or anything like that, please feel free. Uh, the number is uh, 508-866-1019, Foreign Area 58, and uh, just ask for me, Richard. And I will uh, speak to you and talk to you about whatever you'd like to discuss regarding this. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, is Attorney Dolan still here? He's right there. Okay. Um, so that's it for. Oh, uh, we still have one more item for Caesar. Uh, that that's vote to authorize a addition of IT department for town's Amazon account with stipulations. Caesar, come back up. Uh, I could not hear that. So I, I just don't know if I'm missing anything. No, we ended we, the hearing. We motion to end the hearing and continue the ascertainment um, hearing until uh, December 10th. So, I, so we close tonight's hearing. Okay. Okay. Um, and we'll lose it. Yeah, we got that. Don't worry, that's all set. Okay. So, uh, IT department usage of the Amazon account? Yes. Um, some departments have their own Amazon accounts. Uh, actually, every facility, you know, library, police, fire, highway, have their own Amazon accounts. And right now, if I need to order something off Amazon, which usually it's uh, cheaper and sometimes easier to get it from there versus one of our normal suppliers. I have to pretty much have the request in between Monday and Thursday, eight to four. Um, and that's because it goes to the treasurer's office. And with my department also having to operate 24 seven, similar to the other public safety departments, sometimes ordering equipment or being forced to send an order during a specific time frame doesn't really align with my uh, schedule. Not schedule, but like the amount of work I do during the day. Like I'm not worrying about ordering equipment during the day. I'm worrying about fixing issues during the day. By the time I get to the more administrative part, they're already gone, and I've lost an entire day of ordering something. So I could have gotten it in before five o'clock. So we just need to vote to authorize you usage for the IT department of the town's Amazon account. To have our own, to have a separate account for the IT department. So that, you're fine with that? So is there a motion? And then the mm -hmm. funds would come out of IT. Well, the funds yeah. are gonna come out it's of IT. One, it is it's one, one account, that. it's just a login. To, and then we get our own bill, and we would submit it. Okay. Okay. Is there, uh, Troy moved it. Ashley, you second? I second. All those in favor, aye? Aye. aye. All right. Um, and then. Now we have one more thing we have to do um, the annual debate. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's very, it's a. Um, we messed up. It's a second one down. That's it. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Do I need to move to approve it? Yeah, or do yeah, I have yeah, yeah. Move to approve the ambulance abatement for October 2021 for $159,487.11. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, aye? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right, so okay. next up we have executive session. Uh, is there a motion to go into executive session for contract negotiations with the interim town administrator, sergeants, and firefighters as discussing strategy with respect to the collective bargaining and open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town? Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor, Ashley? Yes. Troy? Yes. And myself? Yes. And then, um, is there a motion to meet with town council in executive session pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Sections 21, Subsection A, Subsection 5, and Suffolk Construction versus DCAM 449, Mass. 444 2007 to discuss investigations of charges of criminal misconduct or consideration of the filing of criminal complaints. Is there a motion? I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor, Ashley? Yes. Troy? Yes? To discussing it? Yep. Yes. Yeah. And myself? Yes. Okay. Um, the next one you guys should handle. Uh, oh, actually, I can do a um, motion to go into executive session to discuss the approval of meeting minutes from executive sessions on July 2nd, July 13th, 20th, and 23rd. 
Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Ashley? Yes. Troy? Yes. Myself? Yes. I move to go into executive session to discuss litigation for Gordon C. Andrews versus Town of Halifax. Petition 868 and 869, Gordon Andrews v. Town of Halifax. Petition 915-2083, Gordon Andrews v. Town of Halifax. Petitions 922 and 92220. And Gordon Andrews v. Town of Halifax, Civil Action Number 120, Number 11659. As discussing strategy with respect to litigation, open meeting may have detrimental effect on the litigation position of the town. Second. All those in favor? I've seen my name, Ashley. Mm -hmm. Aye. Troy. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. recuse. All right. Can we take like a five minute recess? Yeah, first five minute maybe? five minute recess and uh, both chiefs if you could stay. Perfect. Yes. Thank you.